Photographic Composition Lecture 5, The Digital Darkroom, Part 2. Dwayne Michaels uh, has been engaged in creating serial imagery and multiple imagery, um, such as we see here. In this instance, um, he had a, uh, a session with Rene Magritte, the Belgian surrealist, in which he uh, exposed this interior scene first with, without Magritte, and then with Magritte sitting in the uh, foreground, um, and then also standing off to the side and viewing the scene as we see in a um, reflection in the mirror on the left. In this instance, um, the scene was photographed uh, with Magritte uh, facing the camera and then with his back to the camera. It's entirely conceivable though that uh, Magritte and this scene were never in the, the same place at the same time. Um, and this might in fact be a um, uh, combination of three images as opposed to just two. Um, he has, uh, in more recent years, um, added color. Um, what he's primarily worked in is, is black and white. He's also painted on images. Um, whatever he needs to um, express himself is, is fair game as far as he's concerned. Edmund Teske was a Los Angeles photographer. Um, who uh, photographed um, a lot of people, um, created a lot of allegorical scenes, um, mostly uh, manipulated his images in a variety of ways. In this case, um, this is a photograph of Jim Morrison of The Doors, um, and it has been overlaid with several other images. It looks like perhaps um, a flower or two, and perhaps a landscape, it's not clear and um, clarity is not the, the intention here. Um, this is, gives you a, a, a clearer idea of some of the manipulation that Des Teske would um, engage in. The image on the left is um, clearly unmanipulated. Um, on the right, however, is one that has been solarized. That's where the, the process in which um, a developing print is exposed to um, direct light briefly. and um, in that process, this uh, discoloration occurs, and um, lights often turn to darks. Darks can turn to light. Um, and the results are, are difficult to control and um, uh, will never be exactly the same more than once. Jerry Ulsman, um creates incredibly complex um, multiple images, in this case, He's taken the negative of a tree and flipped it horizontally so that it's um, uh, completely symmetrical. Um, then combined that with um, a, a shot of the seashore and into that um, included or dropped in the image of the women in silhouette. This is uh, quite typical of Yulesman's work in which he has taken a, uh, a structure and placed it in such a way that it looks like it's growing out of the uh, root structure of a tree. Um, this image probably in involved um, three or four images to begin with. It's a very painstaking process and one that is um, very difficult to replicate over and over again. Um, each print tends to be a little bit different than than the one that came before it. And I should also point out that this requires thinking ahead and um, pre-visualizing, if, if you will, um, what he's going to be doing with the images um, when he gets into the dark room. Robert Heineken um, was the uh, photographer who started the um, photography department at um, UCLA back in the late 1950s and was also a great photographer in his own right. Um, he wasn't so much interested in his own imagery as he was with manipulating other imagery. In this case, um, a, uh, a page from a um, magazine um, which was then transferred or re-photographed and um, placed in a print. Um, 
the overlap of information is part of what um, he was after. It's random, but also um, he would spend a lot of time editing um, what he found. Um, here we have, uh, and we, in this case, we also have text, are you ready or are you real, um, leaving the um, uh, interpretation up to the viewer. This is another example in color of um, uh, Heineken's process, where he's done the same thing. This is using a transfer process where the ink from the um, original magazine page is transferred to um, plain paper. Daryl Curran um, uses multiple imagery. In this case, it, it appears to be a couple of cyanotype um, images and um, a photograph of a hot dog and um, something else in the background. Not sure what that is. Um, this is again using a transfer process where the original inks are transferred to um, another medium, in this case, a, a paper. Um, more Currently, Curran has been experimenting with um, compositions that he would create on a scanner, and there's no actual camera involved. Um, he would create a tableau and then cover it with either paper or fabric um, or something else and just scan the, the scene. As a result, we end up with these very kind of delicate, um, beautifully rendered um, images. Patrick Nagatani uh, creates images with a, a, a great number of um, images um, in order to get this one composite. And um, with the intention of juxtaposing um, various kinds of, of uh, imagery and ideas. This is a, a bit more straightforward, but um, also a manipulated image by Nagatani. James Fee um, used processes that were relatively arcane um, and uh, would often create results like this in which the image is not uh, terribly clear. Clarity is not the objective. Um, these are uh, as if they were found remnants um, without um, any kind of context. It's clear that it's the Statue of Liberty, but um, that's about all that's clear about it. Um, his intention, I think, here is to um, let the audience in on how he was feeling at the time that he made the image. Um, whatever the viewer brings to it is also uh, completely valid, but um, it has this very personal feel to it. Um, this is from a series that feed um, did on uh, the, the relationship with his father, who had fought in the Second World War, was in the Navy, and um, Fee had actually gone to the location where um, his father had um, at one time been involved in, in, in a battle and um, uh, brought back imagery that expressed um, his impressions of the place. Mark Klett is known for um, having taken um, 19th century photographs and gone back to those locations and rephotographed them. Um, he has been collecting this imagery, both his own and historical images, and combining them in uh, more and more complex um, compositions, as, as, such as the one that you see here. And uh, this is more of the same kind of work that Klett has been engaged in. Again, some of the images are his, and some of them are um, by other photographers, and some of them 100, 150 or more years um, previous to his work. This image by Andrew Skursky would appear to be um, a relatively straightforward image, but in fact it's a composite. It's made from, I believe, four or five images, which were then stitched together. Um, in, um, in Photoshop. And if you look really carefully, you're going to need to find an image, uh, a print that's much more detailed than this is, but you can actually see that the receding point changes as you go from one to the next, but the overall 
um, impression is of a single um, scene that was shot all in, at once. Um, a, a twist on that same idea was employed to create this, in which multiple um, exposures were made of the same scene and um, then combined various sections of um, those various exposures were combined to create a scene in which um, it looks like there's far more activity than was actually going on at the time. This image by Gursky um, looks relatively straightforward, but in fact, um, there was a uh, either a factory or a power plant um, very prominent in this scene, and he didn't feel that it, it suited his vision, so he removed it. That kind of work generally takes time and is part of the reason that uh, Gursky does not uh, create a lot of images um, each year. David LaChapelle um, began as a celebrity photographer and uh, more recently has been uh, highly manipulating his images and uh, to the point of, of um, uh, scenes like this, which look almost like cartoons. Um, they're so complex, but also so unlifelike, so surreal, um, that they don't really look like photographs anymore. This is actually much closer to um, uh, straight photography, um, at least as far as La Chapelle is concerned. And um, obviously a scene that probably did not actually occur. <laughs> 